Hi everyone, good afternoon and welcome to this afternoon's session. My name is Jared Holmes, I'm a representative of the Australian Government's Department of Environment. Um, this afternoon we're here for the presentation Nunan Narendari Yunan, listen to what Narendari have to say. Caring for Narendari, lands, water, people and all living things. We have five presenters this afternoon. Uh, Mr. Steve Hemming, Mr. Tim Hartman, Mr. Lachlan Sutherland, Mr. Clyde Rigney and Grant Rigney. Um, I'll just ask you to join me in welcoming the presenters to the stage. Thank you very much. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you for inviting us to this um, fantastic conference here at Wynn. Um, I just want to pay my respects to the Larrakeers, the traditional owners of this lands, past and present. I just want to introduce our, um, our organisation, our contingency that we have out here at the moment. We have, um, Clyde Rigney is a caring uh, for country coordinator in our Nuttingdy um, uh, uh, area. Uh, we have Steve Hemming, who's the co-chair of our Nuttingdy Research and Policy and Planning Unit, based at Flinders University, so we have partnerships here. Um, Lachlan Sutherland is the Aboriginal coordinator of the Indigenous Partnership Projects for the Department of Environment, Natural Resources and Water. And I'm going to hand over to Timmy Hartman. Timmy's our, um, our vice chair of the Nuttingdy Regional Authority to kick the presentation off, so thank you. Yeah, thanks for that, Grant. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank the Larrakia Nation for their hospitality and their welcome to country. We pay our respects to the Larrakia Nation's ancestors, elders and leaders. We also pay respects to elders and leaders from the First Nations. As well as we'd also like to recognise and pay respects to Ngunnawal ancestors, leaders, elders and young people. And also acknowledge we've got other Ngunnawal Regional Authority board members with us today in the, in the audience. Yep, if you just look up behind me, you'll see we've got a map of Ngunnawal lands, or Ngunnawal Rui would say in, in, in our language. And we're the part of the map which is down about the middle of it, and it's central around the Kurong Lakes and River System at the end of the River Murray. Now, I just want to warn people that some of the images that we've got in our PowerPoint presentation that do have some elders who've passed on. Um, and the first slide here we've got is some of our elders and leaders who have passed on, Uncle Tom Trevorrow, Uncle Matt Rigney, and George Trevorrow. This particular slide is talking about a lot of our philosophy and I suppose our position on how we think about country. So this is a quote from our elders saying that the land and waters is a living body. We, the Ngunnawal people, are part of its existence the land and waters must be healthy for Ngunnawal people to be healthy. We are hurting for our country. The land is dying, the river is dying, the Kurong, Kurong is dying, and the Murray mouth is closing. What does the future hold for us? So the context of that statement was our response to a, a very lengthy drought that was occurring in our part of South Australia. So it meant our people and our nation and our country were suffering. This particular slide is making reference to how the, South, the state of South Australia or the colony of South Australia was established. A lot of people may not be aware, but South Australia was established as a free colony and as such, it was meant to be established in a certain framework and a certain manner. Unfortunately, it was never taken up and that framework was called the Letters Patent 1836. And within that document, it actually spelled out a roadmap and a step-by-step -step on how Aboriginal people in South Australia were meant to be engaged, compensated, negotiated with in regards to how the province was to be established and managed. So as it says here, provided always that nothing in those our letters patent contained shall affect or be constructed to affect the rights of any Aboriginal natives of said province to the actual occupation or enjoyment their own persons or in the persons of their descendants of any lands therein now actually occupied or enjoyed by such natives. So unfortunately, that particular document was not um, taken up as it should have been. This particular document here or <coughs> slide is making reference to the Aborigines Act 1911 within South Australia. And it gives a bit of context to 
a lot of the hard times our ancestors, our leaders and our nation have had to struggle through. So the, the, the slide itself is pretty self-explanatory, but it gives you that insight into how the chief protectors saw Aboriginal people and tried to manage Aboriginal people. This particular slide here, um, I might get Steve just to make reference to, because it actually discusses and talks about one of the biggest challenges our nation have had in modern times in regards to um, Aboriginal issues and heritage and culture for our nation. Um, yeah, that, the um, slide uh, refers to the Hindmarsh Island bridge issue, um, Comrank issue, which in 1988 the Ngunnawal uh, leaders, elders, tried to protect a heritage site to do with waters and lands, and it um, ended up uh, being a very, very damaging um, issue for the community, and the site wasn't protected, and the issue went to the High Court of Australia. Um, it was an example of, of Ngunnawal people trying to use legislation to protect their, their lands and waters. Um, from that issue, um, Ngunnawal learned a lesson, uh, I guess, not to actually try to use legislation to find a way through to a future. And a number of uh, years later, um, not very many years later, there was a, an opportunity to negotiate a, a contract law agreement with the local council. Uh, I'll just touch back a second. Um, and that was in the same area where the Haimash Island issue occurred. And that was the first Konga Ngarindri Yana agreement that was set up. The leadership and elders decided not to go down the track of legislation or go into the courts. They thought that maybe they could negotiate an agreement with the local council to try to find a different way forwards to the future. And so that was the first um, listen to what Ngarindri people have to say, Kunga Ngarindri Yanan Agreement in 2002. And it happened over the desecration of a burial ground in that region. Ngarindri have also um, declared dominion in South Australia and presented a declaration of dominion to the, to the governor. So there's been an ongoing political um, project that Ngarindri leadership have continued on to pursue um, in the spirit of the original promises in the letters patent. Um, this is just a, a bit of a background, I guess, to give context to where Ngarindri have got up to today. That led to, in about 2006, the Ngarindri Nation working um, together to produce uh, a plan for, for country, a Yalawarui plan, sea country plan, um, which was a vision for what Ngarindri people wanted to ha see for the lands and waters, which set the sort of the platform for um, negotiating with the government. Um, I'll put my hand over here to, uh, to Grant Rigney to explain the, uh, the overall strategy that Ngarindri developed on that point. Yeah, thank you, Steve. It, it, it was a really innovative process for us as a nation group um, to, to build this mechanism of the Kunga Ngarindri Yanan Agreement, which really stipulated some processes of real clarity for us as a nation group of how we engage with government, private business, enterprise, whatever it may be. So we had a strategy back in 2001 to to start developing this, this process of this agreement, which is a great tool for us as a nation group to be utilising at that ground level, because we knew we were getting nowhere with the first tier of government at federal and the second tier of government at state level. So we really concentrated our, our methods around local government. And at this moment, we have about three to four of our Kunga Ngarindri Yanan agreements with our local government councils. So that really set the put the impetus in onto the states, because we went to the state and said, well, hold on a second, we have your local government who are recognising us as their constituents, as sovereign traditional peoples within our lands and waters, of starting negotiations around how we engage with each other. And then we initiated the KMYA agreement into the state level. Now, we really didn't want to be looking at the Liberal or the Labor Party. We wanted the Crown Solicitor's Office. We wanted something that was going to give us real um, outcomes at the end of the day and at the moment we have an overarching agreement with the state government of South Australia now that we can actually say we want to be at the table we're not knocking on the door can we please come in and talk about what businesses and what practices you want to do in our country we're there at the table straight away so this is the overarching at the moment we're developing another KMI agreement and it's been 10 to 12 years in the planning at the federal level we're now negotiating a process with the KMIA with the, um, with the Commonwealth Environmental Water Holder, which is a real crucial area for the, the livelihood of our peoples and all peoples right across Australia. So we're trying to build these initiatives in to say, hey, there are other methods that can be utilised where you don't need to be going down the method of legislation or acts. And this is done on our terms. 
So this is why it's really imperative that these types of mechanisms get put in order because it gives us real clarity about how we will go about business within our own country. As well as doing the KMYA agreements, we've looked at spreading our wings out into the international world. And we're very lucky with our research policy and planning unit that we have international connections through acad academics, basically. And my older brother, Darrell, is the Dean of Indigenous Engagement and Strategy at Flinders University, started this dialogue with international organizations, mainly within the United States of America at that time through the National Congress of American Indian Nations. And at the present moment, we have a direct treaty with the Umatilla Confederated Nation Groups in Portland, Oregon. So we're starting to build some dialogue into those areas of how we can look at trade, commerce, economics, education. So we're looking outside the square and not just internally within Australia itself. The United Leagues of the Indigenous Nations, as you can see on the screen here at the bottom there, are one of the real key prospects of this area of trade and economics. And the Yulin Group basically started off with about eight or nine groups that signed on to a worldwide treaty. It's a, it's a massive movement at the moment. There are well over 110 to 120 nations now that have signed on to the Yulin process. Get it on, you can actually look it up on the website, just Google Yulin and have a look at what's going on in that space. Okay, so I'll hand it back to Tim to talk about our structure internally. Yeah, thanks Grant. So just to give you a bit of an overview around how our community organisation and our governance structure works and the sort of model we've developed. So as the, the previous presenters were talking about, as Nutundry we've been ha having to look at new ways and bringing up the speed how we're going to engage with our own people, with our nation and how we're going to engage externally as well with government, state governments, local government and now we're making inroads into the federal arena. <coughs> so the Nutundry Regional Authority is actually made up of the majority of all the different community organisations which exist on our country. And it's about bringing all these groups together and having a representative body which is then becomes the peak body to go and engage and negotiate and move forward for our nation. So it's, it's realistically, it's part of our nation building project to make our community stronger into the future. So underneath the regional authority, we've then got two other bodies. One is NEPL, Nutundry Enterprises Propriety Limited, which is looking at opportunities around economic development. So both active and passive investment opportunities. So in that sort of space, we've bought properties where we've then leased them out to generate an income to be able to service the debt, because we went and borrowed money to do, to do them activities. And then eventually we'll have an asset which have been paid off and then we can use that future income to go and do other community projects or, or invest in other types of economic development. The other part of our model is Narendri Rui Contracting, NRC. And this is the part of our organisation which is our operational arm. And this is, the area where we heavily invest in employment opportunities as well as training and um, education. So within that space, we've heavily invested um, in, a, in a quite large workforce, uh, seasonally up to about 50 odd people, which uh, ranges on the ground in, in different formats. And the type of activities they're doing is, is natural resource management, uh, cultural heritage management, as well as um, <coughs> nursery operations and, and, and other activities. So it, it's really a mechanism where we've created a lot of opportunities. Then underneath these as well, running parallel, we've got our Nutundri Yalarui program, which is our sea country program. Uh, we have our heritage program. Um, as Steve said earlier, we've got our Nutundri Research and Policy and Planning Unit, which is hosted within Flinders University. And what that, what that does is provide our strategic direction, um, help us develop the policies and procedures to be able to move into the future and be competitive. As well as we've got other sort of projects that we're working on and aspiring to is, is trying to manage our Nutundry community health, housing, et cetera, et cetera. So the type of way we're trying to set up and try and do business into the future, as the guys have said previously, we've hit roadblocks in the past where you know, we haven't been able to advocate for our nation, for our people, um, 
the current legislation frameworks haven't really delivered you know what we need as a, as a people and so we we started going down the path of KMYA agreements Kung and Narangi Yanan agreements which means listen to Narangi people talking and so these types of agreements as we've said started off at the local government level so local shires um, and then eventuated into whole of government agreements with the, with the South Australian government and so what that sits within is um, a negotiated contract law which is you know we agree on a set outcomes set process and how we're going to engage and how we're going to deliver on or work together on a particular issue um, the Nutundri Regional Authority then with these KMY agreements is building good governance and nation building for the future and then we've got NEPL the economic development stuff self-determination establishing the Nutundri Rui contract cultural change in management in regional management so what this is is as part of the KMY agreements we're actually chart starting to change how the different agencies or the different parties are thinking about Aboriginal issues so when we talk about Nutundri issues on the ground it means they're coming to talk to us and 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 we are doing the the research the planning and we are de delivering a a position which is from our perspective and not imposed you know from white fellows or, or anyone else out there and then you know we're making sure that you know Narendra Yalarui is central you know our culture our lands and waters are central to to what we're doing <coughs> so what the whole of government came my agreement which was signed in 2009 is is a legal binding agreement entered between Narendra and various ministers of the Crown in South Australia to articulate the rights and obligations flowing between them in relation to the subject matter of the agreement so basically we, we had the ministers come along and express a desire to, to develop a new relationship um, between the state government and Narendra people based upon mutual respect and trust acknowledging that Narendra consider protection and maintenance of culture and cultural sites upon its land and waters central to every respect to Narendra community well-being and existence and so what this agreement with the ministers what provided and, and wishing to provide was to support and resource to the Narendra Regional Authority and enter into negotiations and consultations with the Narendra about the maintenance and protection of Narendra culture and cultural sites and natural resources um, of the lands and waters how do we work these agreements in practice so once a month we have a KMY task force meeting so what we have is Narendra leadership sitting in the room with representatives from all the different government agencies who work within South Australia so that would be um, Department for Environment you, you might have um, Department for Primary Industries you might have SA Water um, you know you, you have all the different agencies of government they'll come down on Narendra country sit in the room and talk about what projects they've got happening on our country um, look at opportunities for employment or contracting and it makes them accountable so they've actually got to, got to come and engage in an agreed upon framework for negotiation and way forward so in that in that particular photo was a picture of Uncle Matt um, with our community and the government reps so what the key elements of the KMY agreements are is to acknowledge that Narendra as traditional owners and the NRA as its peak body um, are the people to negotiate and, and engage with because it's a contract law agreement it means it's outside of legislation so all of these agreements have been outside of native title Aboriginal Heritage Acts and, and other types of legislations what the agreements as well is recognizing or recognition of Narendra control of cultural knowledge governance identity cultural heritage and cultural knowledge protection it also recognizes Narendra responsibilities and requirements to care for country so there's a commitment to resourcing it was a new relationship between Narendra local state and now we're currently working on entering into these types of agreements at the federal level so it's an, it's an establishment of negotiation partnership and you know true consultation protocols one of the key things about the KMY agreements is it set up a framework that if 
in the task force, we were not getting um, an agreement around a certain issue, or we became locked, and you know, Narendri wanted a particular um, position, and the government said, no, we can't work that out. In this framework, um, every three months, we've got a guaranteed meeting with the relevant government ministers. So every three months, we go to, to Adelaide, and we sit down in the room with the ministers. Um, so if it's an environmental issue, we sit down with the Minister for Environment, or if it's an Aboriginal Heritage, we sit with the Minister for Environment and Heritage. <coughs> or Aboriginal Heritage. So every three months, we get a, a meeting with the Minister to negotiate and, and discuss these issues and maybe why the roadblocks are there. One of the other, you know, put the... Yep. Um, what we've got here is some examples of our Narendra Yalarui program, our, our land and sea program, and um, looking at a lot of our ranges on the ground and the type of activity. So one of the photos is of the Kurong, Kurong, and then we've got our nurseries, and you know, all of our team as well is involved in a lot of our planning and delivery of our programs. Um, this like to. In Clyde. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Clyde Rigney. I'm the um, Yala Rui coordinator for the Northern Jetty Regional Authority. Um, so, as you can see with the framework that's been outlined um, and some of the history, uh, the Yala Rui program is our opportunity on the ground to be able to work very, very closely with the department, particularly the Department of Environment, Water and Natural Resources, to look at specific projects to look at specific processes uh, as to how we engage um, the information, knowledge, consultation and processes that go into all of those projects. Um, and it's um, a, way, a way that we've been able to come under the KMIA agreement under the Kung Lan Yunnan, um, that government has been able to acknowledge and honour the agreement and then support Narendri. And so I'm just going to hand over to Lockie. Lockie's going to talk about a specific project, uh, the Clem Murray Futures Project, um, about his role in that, and then I'll finish off talking a little bit more about Yala Rui. Thanks, Clyde. Um, a key commitment in the KMI agreement was for the Department of Environment, Water and Natural Resources to negotiate uh, and uh, work with the Nurinjeri Regional Authority to build them into the Kurong Lower Lakes and Murray Mouth Recovery Project. It's a, a key project under the Murray Futures Initiative that's Commonwealth funded. Um, we I guess started out with uh, the Narendri uh, collaboratively developing that project. It's based around their sea country plan and the, I guess the objectives and initiatives, aspirations they've um, placed into there. Uh, I guess core to that project, it's around focusing around building the core organisational capacity of the NRA to engage in natural resource and cultural heritage management. Um, it's got four key components. The last slide had the four key components. Um, I guess to, to build uh, long-standing and meaningful relationships between Narendri and government, um, that's facilitated through these KMY task force meetings, uh, but also through the development of joint funding applications with, um, with government. Um, a, an example, the NRA recently uh, put in a submission for caring for our country, for a part of their country, um, at the mouth of the Murray River, and uh, the department and SA Water were, were key partners on that. Um, there's a, a heritage, cultural heritage and management um, component of the project. Uh, I guess a, a key part of that core capacity building focus was uh, in the long term to build Narendri as major players in uh, the, the management and care and control of um, natural resources within uh, their, their region, as well as to build capacity through training and um, development opportunities. Um, so it's, it's really... Um really set up a, a really good process, a really clear process, um, not a lot of grey area, which is really, really good, you know. Uh, one thing Aboriginal groups and government have had for a long time, I think, is a lot of grey area. So we've been able to, through this process, been able to work through a lot of that uh, to the point now we're very, very clear about the way we engage, um, and we're able to hold that to account, we're able to hold the process to account, um, we're able to then start to work through you know, the planning processes, so actually writing into management plans, writing into business plans, um, and then actually scoping of projects. And we've, we've developed a number of different mechanisms, um, statements of commitments around 
each project so that we actually have a statement which outlines how we're actually committing to each other through this process and through specific projects. Um, cultural heritage has been mentioned a lot and a part of our role um, from the NRA is, and through the Yala Rui program and also with support of our research policy and planning unit has been how to implement specific processes around cultural heritage management um, to develop things like a matrix as to how you know, if we're engaging with government contractors and how they actually work with us, um, that they actually come in and, and receive cultural awareness training from us before they step on the country and start doing work. You know, so we're working very hard um, to ask the right questions of each other and um, you know, get that process happening and, and um, really, really diminish as much of that grey area as possible. And to this day, it's, uh, I think we can all agree it's been a pretty positive process. We've been able to, um, like a lot of communities, we were hit really, really hard around CDAP reform. So we've been able to use a process like this to be able to, you know, generate a lot of energy, uh, create a lot of jobs, um, bring that, um, you know, that self-determination and that community capacity building back to Nuttingdity country. Um, so what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to hand back to Grant Ridney. Grant's going to talk a bit about some of our involvements in water. Thank you. Yeah, no, I'll take this one. Um, so what the Kungan Narendra Yanan agreements are about is Narendra do not have treaties, we don't have land rights, and we currently do not have a native title determination. It doesn't mean that we're not aspiring to get there, but what the, the KMY agreements are, or contract law agreements, is give Narendra a very strong legal foundation to take control of the future. And it's a process where we're able to take control and actually go down that path of a nation building exercise. So into the future, we want to set it up so our future generations are going to be provided for and manage country and look after it properly. Thank you. Have we got a few minutes in case anyone wants any questions? Five? Any questions? Yeah. Water. The water issues. Do you use work with the uh, people up the river, like in, up further up the river, up the Darlings, and like say me here, back is that one? Yeah, we certainly do. I, one of my other hats that I wear, I'm the chairman of the Murray Lower Darling Rivers Indigenous Nations. So there's 24 confederated nation groups from the Snowy Mountains to the Murray Mouth, and we're heavily involved in all processes right across the whole regime of water at the moment. Uh, through the Murray Darling Basin Authority, the Living Murray Program, and the Commonwealth Environmental Water Holder. So, is that working with uh, government as an indigenous group based, or like in that sort of system up the, to the Snowy Mountain? What about up the Darling? Um, further up the Darling, there's another group um, called the Northern Basin Aboriginal Nations NBAN, and um, Fred Hooper, uh, as uh, actually speaking a bit later on today, is the chair of that group. So, they engage with the north half of the Murray-Darling Basin and the, and the Mildred Confederation deal with the southern half of, of the Murray-Darling Basin and the, and the Commonwealth at the same time. What about in the Queensland now? Yeah, that's, that's NBAN. Okay. Yep. All right, thank you. No worries. Any other questions? We ha only have um, time for one more quick question. Hello there, Limon. I'm from Western Australia. Uh, like you said, that you run your own country without the help of all the um, government funding bodies and whatever. How do you manage with your elders, or do your elderly people tell you what to do, and not the government? Because it is a very good idea, and you give me some ideas to, um, like, you more doing the right thing running your own country without no one telling you what to do and what not to do. 
Yeah, we, we certainly do. Um, within our regional authority, we have an, or, an elders group, and the chairperson of the elders group has that representation on the Nuttingham Regional Authority. So we are directly, you know, being guided in, a, in so many facets of this whole um, process that we've engaged with by our elders. That's for sure. Yeah, and like Grant was saying, the Nuttingham Regional Authority, it has a membership of 14 people, but they've been elected there by a group of people in the thousands. So throughout our governance structures and our, and our election process, it, it filters upwards to our peak body. And, and, that, and that's the mechanism we use to engage with our broader community, as well as to be able to make decisions on behalf of country. And we also do have our traditional governing body in order called the Tendi. And the Tendi has a, a process where our elders elect the head clans person called the Rupali that has an automatic seat that sits on the Nuttingham Regional Authority as well. Thank you. Thank you. If anyone's got any other questions, feel free to approach any of us um, outside of the session. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks a lot for that. That was a really interesting talk. Just to ask everybody to join and thank all our presenters. Thank you very much.